Although hygiene in the Middle Ages was basic in comparison to what current people experience, this does not imply that medieval hygiene did not exist. People adopted the best sanitary measures they could while living in a period before indoor plumbing, shampoo, and nail salons. They didn't have much to work with, unfortunately. Peasants found it extremely tough and couldn't always afford luxuries like more than one pair of clothes. Personal hygiene in the Middle Ages meant staying clean any way you could, even if it was difficult. So what was the condition during that time? Follow till the end to know more about it. When it comes to hygiene, the Middle Ages had a terrible image, particularly among the peasants. Despite the general lack of running water and other modern conveniences, there were common expectations of personal hygiene such as regularly washing from a basin, particularly the hands before and after eating, which was regarded as good etiquette in a period when cutlery was still a rarity for most people. The wealthy could take more frequent baths, and castles, manors, monasteries, and towns provided nicer toilets with better drainage, and occasionally even flowing water using the old combination of cisterns and gravity. Naturally, cleanliness standards varied across time and location, and even between people, as they do today. What follows explores the overall hygiene practices and expectations in medieval Europe. Water Provision Villages had access to water from surrounding springs, rivers, lakes, wells, and cisterns. Indeed, most communities grew up precisely because of the vicinity of a stable water supply. Castles may have been built for the same purpose and received additional water from masonry-lined wells dug into their inner courtyards, which were occasionally accessible from inside the castle, keep for further protection while under siege. Over 420 castles in the United Kingdom were studied, and 80% had a well in their interiors, with one quarter having two or more. The good shaft might be exceedingly deep. The one at Beeston Castle in England is 124 meters deep. Some castles, such as Rochester Castle in England, even had the ability to draw water from a well at every level of the keep using a system of buckets and ropes that went within the walls. Cisterns gathered rainfall or natural ground seepage, and occasionally a castle, such as Chester Castle in England, had a system of lead, wooden, or ceramic pipes that brought water from a cistern to other lower areas of the castle, such as the keep or kitchens. Another method of collecting supplemental water was to install pipes on the roof that would drain rainfall into a cistern. Finally, settling tanks were sometimes used to enhance water quality by allowing silt to settle before the cleaner water was drained off. Many monasteries would have some or all of these characteristics. As cities developed in number and size throughout Europe beginning in the 11th century CE, cleanliness became an increasing daily concern. Fortunately, many of the bigger cities were built on rivers or beaches to assist commerce. Thus, water supply and trash disposal were less troublesome in these areas. Canals, water conduits, wells, and fountains supplied relatively clean water to the city's population. These were upheld by town governments who also enforced hygienic measures on local enterprises and the general public. For example, it was often required to clean the section of the street immediately in front of one's home or store. Cities and towns may have public baths. Nuremberg, which seems to have been one of the cleanest towns in Europe due to its progressive council, had 14 of these. During periods of the epidemic, local governments also adopted emergency measures such as evacuating the corpses. Personal Care Given the scarcity of flowing water and the physical exertion required to get one bucket full from a well or other water source, it is probably not surprising that having a complete bath every day was not a viable choice for most people. Baths were considered a luxury due to the expense of fuel used to heat the water, and monks, for example, were often barred from taking more than two or three baths a year. Those that had a bath had it in the shape of a wooden half-barrel or tub. Even if it had been filled, most of the bathing was done with a jug of warm water thrown over the body rather than complete immersion. Because of the unpredictability of finding convenience on one's travels, a lord would have a cushioned bath for additional comfort, and he typically traveled with one. The great majority of individuals, on the other hand, would have sufficed with a brief swill in a basin of cold water. Because 80% of the people had physically intensive tasks on the farm, washing of some type was most likely done on a regular basis. Medieval peasants have long been the brunt of hygiene jokes, dating back to medieval ecclesiastical texts that often characterized them as little more than brutish beasts. Nonetheless, it was customary practice for almost everyone to wash their hands and face in the morning.
because fleas and lice were a prevalent concern, an early bath was also recommended. Even if certain preventive precautions were taken, such as incorporating herbs and flowers like basil, chamomile, lavender, and mint among the straw, rarely changed straw bedding was a special paradise for vermin. Because most people ate without knives, forks, or spoons, it was also customary to wash one's hands before and after eating. Soap was sometimes used, and hair was cleansed with an alkaline solution made by combining lime and salt. Twigs, particularly hazel, and little pieces of wool fabric were used to clean teeth. Unless one was a monk who was shaved daily by a brother, shaving was either not done at all or done once a week. Because medieval mirrors were still not particularly big or clear, most people preferred to see the local barber when necessary. When ordinary peasants bathed, they were presumably more concerned about getting rid of the day's filth. But an aristocracy had a few extra things to attend to in order to achieve favor in polite society. Meals when one might get up and personal with one's peers required special care to cleanliness, and there were even norms of etiquette developed as useful guides for the unimaginative diner. Monks had their own particular washing spaces, such as Cluny Abbey in France, which included a lavabo, or huge basin, where hands were washed before meals. According to documents, they had towels that were changed twice a week, but the water was only changed once a week. A comparable huge basin was often found in the great hall of a castle or manor for guests to wash their hands. In conclusion, it is reasonable to state that the popular portrayal in current films and novels of filthy medieval peasants who saw bathing as a sort of torment is possibly not entirely true, and individuals of all classes did keep themselves as clean as their circumstances allowed. Nonetheless, when medieval Europeans, particularly those of the upper classes, came into touch with foreign civilizations such as the Byzantines or the Muslims during the Crusades, the Europeans often came out second best in terms of cleanliness. Toilets in villages or on manor estates, the population used a cesspit to dispose of their waste, which was subsequently collected and distributed on the fields as fertilizer. A little cabin gave some seclusion in some circumstances, while a wooden seat with a hole afforded some comfort to others. At night, chamber pots were used and then dumped into the cesspit. People had to make do with a handful of hay, grass, straw, or moss in the absence of toilet paper or any paper at all. The toilets in a castle, sometimes known as privies or latrines, were similar to those found elsewhere, except that excrement was channeled down a hole into a cesspit at the foot of the castle walls or into the moat itself. Sometimes there were two toilets next to each other, and they would empty into a canal that was flushed on a regular basis with water from a diverted stream. Monasteries, where toilets were packed together, used the same configuration. Cluny Abbey had 45 such compartments, as well as a spa with 12 baths. Castles may also contain triangular-shaped urinals, particularly in the Circuit Walls Tower. The well-to-do towns had their own privy in the backyard or even in the house itself, with the canal or chute to drain excrement into the yard. Where the poorest classes were concentrated, homes often shared a single outdoor toilet or a number of toilets with their waste going to a common cesspit. The cesspits, which were lined with stone, also accepted any other domestic waste and were frequently emptied by a professional laborer devoted to that specialized and unpleasant work. There were restrictions banning rubbish from being dumped into the street, but these were often disregarded, and a spell of heavy rain or worse, floods, could wreak havoc on the town's sanitation infrastructure and poison the water supply. With cities also teeming with horses and donkeys, as well as farm animals being moved elsewhere or to butchers, the streets were frequently dirty, and this, along with the ever-present rats, mice, and other vermin, meant that urban areas were excellent breeding grounds for illness. That's all for today. Do let us know in the comment box what you all think about the hygiene of that time, and like, share, and subscribe to our channel. Thanks for watching.